The term and feeling of love is a tale as old as time, and whilst definition of it has grown and evolved as time goes by, there's no denying that love has been with us since the birth of the universe. Unless you're like, you're romantic or anything this sort, there's really romantic interest in anyone, and ED, respect. And when love reaches its boiling point, to a point where you can't hold in any longer, it needs to be expressed, either through art, words, or more famously, music and song. What you want to do for love. When you go for these love songs, no matter what decade, what era, and what time it was made, all of these songs always have some similarities, and that comes down to how love exactly works. Bread Soul has an amazing video on this with their review of Perfect Blue, and I highly recommend watching the first few minutes after this video if you want to understand further what I mean. And if you already watched this video on it, then you probably already know what this video is about since it spoils what I'm talking about today. But with that being said, today, let's talk about the use of As Time Goes By in Love Life, the school idol movie. Alright, before we start, obviously spoilers for the School Idol movie. I'm going to give you a few seconds if you don't want to spoil it to you. That's for you, Cody. Anyway, the School Idol movie immediately continues from where Season 2 ended, where Hanio informs the rest of Muse, the group of the show, that the third live is going to be held at the Akiba Dome, which is actually a real place. It's called the Tokyo Dome, though. Okay, I'm editing the video right now. I didn't realize I didn't even specify what a live was, but a live is just uh, the place where they uh, perform and sing. That's pretty much it. I, it. It's a really bit of crucial information that I really thought you guys should know. Okay, need a lot. But before it occurs, Love Life, I mean the production staff behind Love Life, and I mean Love Life as in the in-universe Love Life, not the actual Love Life in real life, uh, in order to attract more people to school idols for the Love Life, they have Muse travel to America where they'll perform. Now where in America, you ask? Why, New York, of course! While traveling New York and having an amazing insert song, Hanukkah, the main character, who was the leader of Muse, gets separated from the rest of the group and PAUSE! STOP THE MOVIE! GRAB THE SCRIPT! GRAB THE SCRIPT! Why is this blank? While she's separated from the group, Hanukkah comes across a street singer singing a song, and this scene right here was something special to me. I think the one thing that caught my eye first was that the full song was in English, and it just radiated or reminiscent of the New York setting, and it gave something of a nostalgic feeling. It definitely sounds like something in the 30s or 40s. Now, I highly implore you to check out the full version of the song because I don't want to get copyrighted, but this singer doesn't just serve as singing a song, but is also an important part of Hanukkah's character. The song that she's singing is called As Time Goes By, and surprisingly, it's not an original song. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A no, this version is a cover based on the 1931 song As Time Goes By, written by Human Hupfield and was first recorded by Rudy Valli. However, most people are more familiar with the 1942 version, and I think this cover is based on that version, as it became famous when it was performed by Dooley Wilson as Sam in the 1942 film Casablanca. You must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss. A the song was so famous, it was actually used as the signature tune of Warner Bros. The fundamental things apply as time goes by. Many famous singers such as Louis Armstrong and Frank Sinatra covered it, and it's been noted that the song is a popular reflection of nostalgia and often used in films and series reflecting this feeling, which actually makes sense considering what I said when I first heard it. Now I want to talk at the lyrics for a quick second, and specifically a snippet of it. The exact snippet that Breadsaw looked at actually. Now I could go bash its lyrics for some of its outdated wording, but I'm not gonna. Balls. Anyway, it's this part right here. Right there, that line. It circles back to my first statement. No matter what, love songs are never out of date. The words we may use to describe it may be a bit different, a bit vulgar maybe, but it's never outdated. Those feelings always remain the same, and as someone who listens to love songs from almost every era, they all radiate the same aura. I I've been trying really hard not to say vibe because I absolutely hate that word, so or it is. It's just so interesting seeing it come from a song from 1931, when over 81 years later, the fundamental things still apply as time goes by. But the main point I want to make the song and its lyrics is that it still exists. As time goes by, no matter how long, love stays and flourishes, spreading its influence to others. 
and this can actually be connected to the story of Muse and Hanukkah. A large portion of the second season, and this movie partially, from what I remember, is the group struggling to disband since the third years are about to graduate, meaning they won't be school idols anymore. And it's something that Hanukkah struggles with the most, as the leader of the group. During her separation time with the rest of Muse, she meets up with the singer like I mentioned earlier, and it's heavily, heavily implied that this is the future version of Hanukkah, and that really plays into the theme of time. The movie starts with the past version of Hanukkah, then shows the present day version of her, so it's only fitting that we also see her future self. During Hanukkah's time talking with her future self, Hanukkah wonders how to deal with the aftermath of a group disbanding like that, with her future self saying that once she thought about that, the singing, the dancing, what it all led up to, the answer was so simple. I think the most beautiful scene in the movie is when they reunite in Japan and she asks Hanukkah if she found her answer, and tells her she can fly, which is a really nice callback to the start of the movie. We get the speech from Ellie, one of the third years who'll be graduating, discussing how popular they've become, and that even no matter what, Muse won't continue, and that they love being school idols. The last part of the movie cements Muse into history, as they collaborate with almost every school idol group to perform Sunny Day Song, a song celebrating every school idol. Just like how love will always remain and persevere through time itself, Muse has done the same thing, melding itself into history to a point that, no matter what, it will always remain its legacy will persevere. Like I stated earlier, a large portion of the movie is spent on time. The time they have together, the time they'll spend singing together, but the one thing not stated is the time their group will be remembered. Muse will be disbanded, but how long will it last in those memories? Well, with this movie, it seems to be forever. Just like love, no matter what, they'll still be there. And we have proof of that with the entire first season of Love Like Sunshine, the sequel series where Aqua is formed because of Chika's love for school idols stemming from Muse. Not only that, the references in Nijigasaki showing the original trophies Muse received also showcases Muse's legacy. Uh, looking at the script, I kind of jumped around some points, but I hope you guys understood the point I was trying to make. Love has stayed relatively the same for years now, despite everything, and that Muse is the same in some regards, in regards to giving out the same feelings it did to others. Hanukkah and Ellie's sister were inspired, so many people in the movie were inspired, and it spread over the sunshine, where a large plot point of the series is how Chika attempts to be like Muse, but learns how to form her own unique group. It's all timeless, and it's so beautiful to see. Now you think I'm ending the video here, but NO! Look at that, that was a bit mean. I actually remembered back when I searched up As Time Goes By Love Life on YouTube, I figured out the English dub version of the Love Life movie does not actually have As Time Goes By as the insert song. I suspect it's because of copyright, because copyright laws in Japan work differently when it's placed outside of there, so it makes sense, but in its place is a completely different song. Here, take a listen. Wait, can we listen to it? Yeah, I, I think we can. The tunes are slightly different, but still reminiscent of As Time Goes By, but the lyrics are all different. There is barely any info in this song, and there's not even the full version of the song. Looking at the credits and this reddit post, the song is called Stars Come To Me, and while it's shown in the wiki and such, there is no such link to a full version and it's really strange. Not many more people are talking about it, so if you know anything, just at me on Twitter, because I'm, I'm really curious about information like this. It's so interesting seeing this type of stuff, like such obscure information, that just intrigues me, and I really want to know more. I'll leave links in the description, but I recommend you check it out. It's always so interesting to see how localization affects series and such outside of Japan, the changing entire songs just to avoid copyright. One of the biggest examples I know of localization is Jojo, where many of the characters and stands are named after bands, musicians, albums, singles, just anything music related, but they have to change in order to avoid copyright. For example, there's a stand in part 5 named Notorious B.I.G, obviously referencing, well, Notorious B.I.G, but in the English localization, it was changed to Notorious Chase. It's always so interesting seeing stuff like this. Well, here's the credits now. Also, I find it really weird that back in 2018 when I watched the Squad the movie and listened to As Time Goes By on YouTube and was just intrigued by it, just a few days later, just a few days later, Red Sword uploads that perfect blue video that I talked about and he mentions Casablanca and it was like the weirdest coincidence ever, like what? He mentioned specifically As Time Goes By as well, so like it was like the biggest coincidence, like what the 